Well, first of all, uh, Tom did a tremendous job here of overseeing the offense as the offensive coordinator, play caller, developing our quarterbacks, and uh, just trying to put Coach Urban Meyer's system into a no huddle, which some of us, we've all had a piece of that, but Tom oversaw it and did a great job. So we're really excited for him and wish him and his family the best at the University of Houston. He'll do a great job there and uh, he'll have a bright future. Um, as far as moving forward through this game, I mean, he's working with us full time. And well, I think young players usually step in for older players because that's normal progression, but the leadership of your team the Mike Bennett's, the Jeff Hiremans, the Evan Spencers, the Curtis Grants, those people, you know, they, they're they the ones who keep the train going on the tracks and they're the ones who keep pushing how you practice and how you prepare and then you plug a young guy in with talent and he learns from them how to keep moving forward and yeah, it's a credit to some of those young guys and the coaches that have coached them and developed them to get them ready to play. but. Uh, the veteran leadership that we have and the, and the coaching staff are the ones who keep the train on the track and keep it moving. And I think that we have strong leadership on this team. One of those guys has been Cardell, and he obviously performed well against Wisconsin. What, Correct. Before you play Alabama, what is maybe like the next step that you want to see from him? Is it the leadership aspect, or is it just like having a better grasp of the offense? As yeah, the I mean, that's all part of playing quarterback. I mean, you know, with one week to prepare, his focus was on how do I execute the offense and now he's got time to to learn how to manage the, the offense a little better how to lead the team a little bit better how to get more comfortable with the guys maybe get more in sync with certain receivers and just get more comfortable with now he's the one standing up in front of the team and calling the plays and, and doing all that you how, know how have you seen him respond to that oh it's been tremendous he, he's it's been fun to watch because uh He's talented and he's he's confident right now, so you can see him growing in that role. And, and every day that's where Tom challenges him to continue to grow as a, a leader and to take charge and to set the tone. Because, I mean, quarterbacks are judged by can they get their team down the field and get them in the end zone. And, you know, that's how you evaluate a quarterback is moving a club down the field, controlling the tempo of the game and scoring points. And uh, that's what ultimately he's asked to do, and then we have to give him opportunities to do that within his skill set. And I, there's been a lot of, I mean, Urban said a lot of times that he sees the biggest growth during camps, whether it's spring or fall camp. How does a month to have with him between the championship game, and can you approach it in that same type of way? To Absolutely. Kind of I mean, because one of the goals or one of the advantages of playing in postseason play is that most teams try to get somewhere between 10 and 15 practices in to prepare for these bowl games, especially if it's a New Year's or after bowl, you can usually get about 15 practices. So that's an entire spring when you look at it because you only get 15 practices in spring ball. So that being said, that gives Cardell an opportunity to have a lot of reps and a lot of time where he's in charge. So hopefully, you know, he can take a few steps in that process and I see him doing that. Is it some small advantage, Ed, that I guess there's not much film on him for Alabama to look at? Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think there there is maybe some advantage to that yeah. because they're very good at evaluating personnel and evaluating strengths and weaknesses and what you might try to do. So, you know, they have a small sample size to kind of understand who he is and what he can do. Um, you know, so I guess that's an advantage for us, you know, and... Uh, you know, then we have to figure out what it is we want to ask him to do <laughs> moving forward that can help us win a game. If he told me he could throw at 85 yards, what is, I mean, that mm -hmm. people like to read that, it's impressive. What, what does that mean to actual, you know, winning quarterback play? He's got well, a gun, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when he needs to put high velocity on a longer throw, he can do that. When he needs to turn one up and, and cut it loose, he can do it. It also means it's probably hard to outrun his arm on deep balls. So you can you can launch him out there and see if you can run under him. And, you know, we've had some guys that are pretty good at that. Devin's pretty good at that. So, but I mean, it's still, accuracy is the number one skill a quarterback needs to have in throwing the football. Number two is anticipation. And uh, number three, you know, is uh, with the anticipation is reading coverages and what's getting ready to happen in front of you. Um, 
got to have you know good pocket presence. Um, so, is it, is but a, but a strong arm allows you to, you know, maybe fit the ball in some tighter windows or less defensive reaction time, break time for the defensive backs. You know.